Guys, welcome so much to another episode of your Candy Show. I'm your host, Candy. We got another special guest in the building. It's, oh my gosh, it's Jay Hussein, <laughs> aka Jay Hussein, musician, recording engineer, and also music producer. Come on, guys. I want you to give it up. Give it up. Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Candy Show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I so much appreciate you coming on. And tell me, where are you coming from today? I'm in Austin, Texas. Nice. Right now. What's, the, what's the weather like over there? I'm actually kind of confused because it's cold, real cold, which is not normal for Texas, like ice and sleet. And so it's, uh, it's freezing. Oh, wow. Right so is the yeah. city prepared for that? Do you, do you guys have snow removal trucks or anything like that? How, how did, how's your city prepared? Um, we normally think it's going to be gone in a couple of days <laughs> and everybody stays home. <laughs> oh, wow. Like as if we're not already staying home as it is. Yeah. So it's even, you know, but that even that's a whole nother conversation with COVID and Texans. And that's, you know, <laughs> I know. Let's not just go there. Let's just go on here and get on in this. You know, you're originally a um, California native, yep. San Francisco. Yep. Born in San Francisco, grew up in Sacramento, grew up going from Sac to the Bay all my life, but um, ended up coming to Texas for college and never left. How long have you been in Texas? I turned 18 in Texas, so it's, it's, it's been okay. like some years. I spent my okay. whole life in Texas. Okay. Now tell us a little bit about your formative years as far as regarding music. Um, I read somewhere... <laughs> Where you uh, was a cello player, you also vi violin, the viola, yeah, yeah and an organ are. player. Tell us a little bit about that, and how did you get your start when it comes to the instruments? It was always in me. I um, grew up in my grandparents. Well, my grandparents lived not far, and so it was over there often, and I was just always banging on the organ and trying to strum the guitar. And the way my grandparents' house was set up, they had this huge window in the living room. And I would just literally go around from playing the organ to the window, making a song singing to the guitar. I couldn't touch the radio. That was all. <laughs> that was all. Because <laughs> I, at one point I was, you know, playing Whitney Houston records on the record player. So I could play any instrument at any time of day. So I've always just kind of played by ear and then just through school, you know how a lot of people have ath athletics to get into something to keep them more engaged in just the school work. Mine was instruments. So I found myself in the orchestra. I wasn't really winded to be in the um, band and it wasn't, wasn't my thing. There's a funny story, you know, in fourth grade, everybody gets that recorder. Yes, I had one. I, yes, yes. I was the Pied Piper with that thing. My mom was really just throwing that thing out the window. She was... <laughs> I remember that recorder. Uh, you know, it kind of sucks because back back then, uh, they had music classes. <laughs> and that was the best thing about it. Yeah, school, I feel like, you know, school curriculum is different than when People of my generation, I think, you know, and even further on, went to school. There was a period where the curriculum was just well, it was robust. You know, there was a period where teachers were just there for passion. They really liked teaching kids. And then I kind of see it's kind of mutated, you know, to less passion, more just numbers based and data driven. But yeah, there's a lot of missing, like home mech, you know, burning, almost burning a school down, trying to learn how to bake. Not me <laughs> personally, but you know, students. <laughs> oh my gosh. And uh, as far as the violin is concerned, I just want to let you know, no one knows this or not, but we share that in common. That was one of the instruments that I also played in my mm -hmm. formative years as well. Really? See, I started the, well, I, got in, I started with the viola. It was, you know, it's right in the middle. And I would play some violin parts in the viola. My teacher quickly saw that, you know, it kept me engaged. I'll go to that class. Even if I didn't want to go to any other class, I went to that one. And over the summer, I played the cello. I was trying to, like, see what else I wanted to play. 
And that cello, I was tired of lugging around, so I was like, yeah, that's not good. That's not going to work. <laughs> the, and then so, I started in the violin. I just ended up going to violin and just stayed, stayed there until I was done with high school. Really? Mm -hmm. I played from seventh grade to twelfth grade in orchestra. I didn't actually stay on the violin just because it was really weird trying to hold that up to your neck. You, you know? know? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was it was it was really hard because it was hurting my neck. So I never stayed in with it, but I stayed in enough to get a music credit. But mm -hmm. yeah, I, I've never met anybody else that uh... <laughs> once, you, once you got your sizing down, you got some padding, you know what I mean? To make sure that your, your neck was where it was supposed to be. Once you stayed in it longer, you start really learning form. You know, my hardest thing was I remember teacher always told me to drop my wrist. You know, I play, but I want to keep my wrist like this. And dropping your wrist was critical. And it just, you know, you just start to develop as you keep going. And so if you develop different skills, some of the things I wish that, like, even then she noticed I would play by memory and ear. And she's like, you got it, because I would learn it that way. And I wasn't really looking at the paper. Okay. Now that yeah. actually leads me into another question, <laughs> which is what I was going to ask. <laughs> Did you have any music uh, training? Because you just said you played by ear. So did you at any point go to school to extend on that? Yeah, you know, while you're in class and you're learning, they're going to teach you the fundamentals while you're a child. So I had to learn chords and progressions and play them. I had to learn because I had to test out to still, you know, test out of the class. So you still have to, to know them and be able to read those scales. And then outside of just that, younger year when I was um, in college I was driving my um, you know the advisors that help you finish those over there <laughs> mm -hmm. well, we're going to talk about my, that too <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was using all my electives for what you know what I elected to do that's the way I interpreted elective oh so I get to elect that it wasn't pick from the following you get what I'm saying how you know normally you have to get this and get this so I was electing to do music and um I think I think I said in one interview where, where I was going to HTC and it was just hard for me to pay attention like at first because I wanted to touch the buttons in the studio. But it's the foundation class and they're asking you foundation questions like theory, like what's down. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> like, you know, what's this button do though? Like, you know, we could have did this in a classroom. Why bring this here? We can't touch nothing. So I started off, you know, kind of going back to get the fundamentals of like on the engineering side, just to go from just that base of being a musician playing to how to take that and turn that into a musical, you know, composition of music. And you've just pointed back there, back there behind you. Tell us, tell us what are those? Yes, um, tell us. And those are my war stripes. <laughs> 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 those are um, actually my associate degree, my bachelor's degree, and my MBA at the top, and then just two cert two certificate letters that I got from some Texas state representative when I graduated with my master's. Shut up. Okay, so tell everybody uh, what subjects, what, what's your degree in? So I have an MBA, which is a master's of business administration with a concentration in management, a bachelor's of science in management, and an associate's of arts. Okay, I'm gonna give it to you. Come on now, come on now. My goal was to try to have, you know, I would grow up and you see people with, you know, their name dash MBA or dash PhD, yes. and I was just always like, I want to be dash A B C D E F G H I J K L M. Why not? Why <laughs> not? I mean, it just makes you more official. That honestly, that and you know, for me, just living, you really you have more time than you think. As you start getting older and you, you know, I don't, I found myself the first time when I was a couple years younger, like a few years, years ago, having regret for not doing something. Yeah. And I was like, I don't really want to feel like that again. So how can I not do that? So I started kind of just looking at what are you, what am I using my time for? And then I just applied myself to it. And once I, the thing is, it's hard to get me to start something, but once I start, I'm going to finish it. So that's why I'm reluctant to start because I'm really thinking about, am I going to finish this? Yes. Finish this? Because I don't yes. like to have a lot of unfinished because starting and not finishing, it just end up like you're just talking about ideas and you're not making things come, making it happen. You know, 
theory is great, but you need application. I have to say, I never went past that when it was a, when it was dealing with music. Mm -hmm. And I also have an associate's in business administration. Mm -hmm. So I kind of understand with mm -hmm. that. And when I went back to school myself, music was one of the classes that was part mm -hmm. of the, the structure. And mm -hmm. it was just so amazing because it didn't just touch on music, but it touched on like literature and how art goes along with that with the music and it, it was just so the art you know what i mean it's just a, a, a sound like the media the medium is sound yes you know yes. so that's why I, like later on now later on i appreciate you know at that but you know at the time when you're young you're just trying to you, you see a goal and you're just trying to get to that and that's kind of like side you know it's it's something you just have to do but yeah that's but awesome. Congratulations on your associates of business, also. So, oh, well, thank you. The commitment to finish those things. Ooh, it was <laughs> very hard, very hard. Uh, you know, I ended up actually finishing going into trying to do the bachelor's in uh, accounting. But that was that was stressful. So I was like, you know, what? I got to drop it after the accounting one. But I was able to maintain like a three point eight something GPA. But it was mm -hmm. <laughs> so again, of hats off. Yes. Yes. That hats off to you. And that thank you. That one accounting class like in business management, you're kind of touching all the fields. Um, but when we had to do that, I can't wait to get out of it. Listen, <laughs> I, was just, I was doing that homework like just hurry up, just, you know, let's get it done. <laughs> Oh, sorry. No, you're fine. Right. My door wasn't expecting it to somebody to knock on it. What made you go to Texas? California is supposed to be the place now. Hey, it's either because I'm in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's California or New York. Why Texas? Well, you know, most people that are like, "How are you thinking about this this young?" Well, I mean, I did the economy. Like, I would go to Texas for family reunions. My stepfather was from Texas, and like, you know, my cousins are actually driving cars to school. Whereas I go to Valley, and they're like, "Aren't you like Valley High School, the book? Don't you don't you guys have cars?" I'm like, "No, not at all. It's like a book. It's fiction." It's fiction. <laughs> but they're actually doing it. it. Was just like I seen like the cost of living was different. Yeah, a lot of people are like, hey, that was super racist in the South. I mean, like, you have all type of people everywhere. You can't run from certain stuff. But certain things that I can, that can work for you is how that, how that, how the economy works in that area. California had friends that they were like, you need a bachelor's to be having a waitress job. And in Texas, you have your high school diploma. I mean, I was in management at 19 in Texas already versus in California, like trying to, Beg to get a job at Macy's over the summer. So I just think for me, I just saw that was why not do that. That seemed like it made sense. So I got here and I did, and it just been good, too good to me to leave. <laughs> it's been too good to leave. I tried and came back. Mm. One year, I took a job, a great job, paid well, and I was lonely. I, I just missed it. I just missed. I just missed everything about it. So interesting. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I've never even been to Texas. So uh, hopefully soon I can get there. <laughs> You're going to love it. I'm going to tell you. <laughs> hopefully soon I'll get there. So tell us how did it actually get you to the point where you're at now? You already were doing music in California. Mm -hmm. You loved it. You switched to Texas. Was it a hard transition for you to get your feet wet and Get everybody to know who Jay Hussein is. I actually started in Texas. I was, like I said, all through, um, like all through to up to high school, I was in California. So that's when I played the violin. So all of my college music, you know, was here, was done in Texas. So honestly, the only thing that was holding me back the most was me just actually putting it out there and working with people. You know, that's kind of, you know, you think, I think most people don't realize at first not starting or always think we I was at first was hey I gotta have this I'm gonna have this first I'm gonna have this first I have that yeah. and I let that stop and then finally someone gonna do it and I did and honestly I can't I think back I'm like how did I do it but honestly I, I'm like I honestly I don't think I really had all the control over it I started to realize I'm like things are gonna happen in the way that they're gonna happen and sometimes yes, as much as we like to plan and have control over things some things we have to sit back and see 
how it goes. So when I put it out there, it was like, okay, I'm going to do it, see how it goes. And if I get the, re the positive feedback, I'll be able to take that and determine what are my next steps and how to keep going forward. And that's kind of what I did and just let it like grew with it because I still had my, you know, regular eight to five. I mean, I still have that. So this is like, how do you let it organically grow and build it to where you have the time for what you're doing? And that's, that was the hardest part. I wanted to do too much, you know, <laughs> and then I had to have that reality check of this is what you can do and how to do it. You know, the music business is interesting. Um, there's, you can run into a lot of shady streets and a lot of bright roads, but you got to like, just kind of stay aware, you know, of, of those things. And sometimes just trusting your gut and saying, mm, I don't know, you know, maybe it sounds too good to be true. There's a lot of that in the music that I hear. Um, so I kind of, I think for music was the one thing in life that I kind of let happen. You know, I kind of control it. I'm a, I'm a planner by day. I'm always um, trying to look out. What's the next thing? What, a, B, playing A, B, C, but music, I like that I don't have to have any control. I'll just let it happen. Did you always want to be behind in the boards, on the boards and in the studio at some point where you wanted to be out in front, maybe a singer, anything like that? No, no, yeah. I have sung and I have rap, but not because it was like I wanted to be a singer or a rapper. It was like because we needed a female voice. And some people were like, you can sing, you can rap. And I'm like, oh, <laughs> you know. So, you know, I do it to get it done. And, and I've done it, you know. And I've done. if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do the best I can in it, you know. So it, it, sometimes some of those things I've done, people are like, you sound really good. You should keep going. I'm like, it's not my passion. But, you know, in music, I think we all end up touching parts that we don't really do anyway, you know, at some, some point. Yeah, there's we're, in a, with. <laughs> we're in a few different hats. You always yeah. have to do that. You have to. I had to at first when I was learning how to engineer too. I didn't always have somebody's voice to use. I mean, I had to use my little. I mean, I, I did a track for one of my projects was my my nephew. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's you felt look. Go ahead. You felt comfortable with that. I mean, I, I had, I had, I needed, I needed material to work with. You know, that's one of the things that like, you need the material to work with. So you end up becoming that material until you develop the, the, the you know, the network of people to work with. So yeah, there was your some... your tracks now. Tell us a little bit about that because it sounds like you're more hip hop trap. Mm -hmm. What made you want to go more in that concentrated area? You know, honestly, I, I thought I was going to be making more love songs. <laughs> That's what I, that was my, I will tell you the moment when I actually was like, okay, I'm going to really make beats. And I was like, okay, I'm going to make a couple ballads. That's what I would always normally play in my head. But then somehow it came out sounding more trappish. <laughs> and, and, then, and honestly, I was expecting more of like R&B singers to be more because my tempos are a little slow, but I'm, I know I I lived in Houston for a long time, so I listened to a lot of screwed music. I listened to a lot of my music slowed down and screwed. So rappers liked it, and and I really just kind of blend the classical element of what I like to hear and to that, and that's kind of the feedback that I've gotten. And that's the interesting thing for me that you have what you create as art and think it is, and then somebody else gets it and like, no, this is what I see. This is my vision, and they take that and just transform it into something even greater, you know, or, you know, so that's, that's, that's been interesting for me to see, like, and the things that you might think that you make, you're like, oh, I don't really like this, but these ones are great. And then the people come in and the ones that you think they won't want, that's what they want. So having to learn that not everybody has their own taste. Yes. So you got to put it out there. There's going to be people that don't like, but then there's going to be people that love it. So you just got to put it out there for, for them to find it. And see, and that's the biggest thing because we are our own worst critics. And mm -hmm. so it's about feeling comfortable. And then mm -hmm. when you don't feel comfortable, like you just said, somebody's going to like it. Somebody's mm -hmm. going to love it. They're going to want it. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, 
with social media and online, I think just in anything, you're going to have positive feedback. You're going to have negative feedback. One of the things early on I just said, you know, you just have to not kind of really feed into it, not listen to it. I mean, a lot of people have, you know, confidence, inner, you know, confidence they wouldn't normally have yeah. in their life. And so you just let it go because if I focus on that, then I can't focus on the people that do want it. You know, so that's that's where I just stay focused on that part. Yeah, because yeah. you can't please everyone and you're not going to. Mm -mm, no. <laughs> but if you don't like it, that's who I'm rocking with. I've been I have a couple of supporters and you know, coming just being online is a little challenging too, because I'm not a natural like look at me. I come from a time where I don't always take pictures of things that we're doing, you know. So sometimes I'm gonna think about it after we're already done, like, oh I should have we should have maybe took a picture of that or or taped that. So that's a little challenging, just kind of keeping up with it because your fans will ask, like, hey, are you okay? We haven't heard anything from you. You know, it's like when I first got that, I was like, me? Like me? <laughs> Say, I was popular, huh? I guess I'm popular. <laughs> like me? Like you, you recognize that? Like, you know, like, wow. I didn't, that's all, like, you know, honor. Even people, I don't compare myself to anybody, but people that compare, I'm like, that's an honor. Like, you know, because I'm just trying to do, what I feel, it feels good, you know, pretty much it. That's when everybody asks, well, a lot of people kind of in, like, producer groups, like, what are some tips? And I'm sitting there like, you guys are going to hate me because I'm random. Like, oh. I just I do what feels good. Like, in this particular song, that application or that, that way of doing something might not actually give me the same result and might not give me the meaning of what I want to hear so I leave it open for each one to, to let my ear and my feeling guide me on what I should or shouldn't do. And sometimes I start, I don't like it, but I don't throw it away. I just save it and move on. I don't spend a lot of time on if I make a mistake. I just don't think about it. I just keep my finish it out. And maybe it's not the hot my, my favorite, but I got to get it done. And then go to the next one so it could be my favorite. <laughs> so what I'm hearing is that your approach to when you go into the studio, there is nothing that's designed out when someone comes to you. Uh, do you just say, well, how do you how do you work with an artist that wants to come in? Do you talk to them and say, hey, so what's your, what's your vision? What's your ideal? And then you go from that or so tell us a little bit about that. When I was just explaining like my, you know, when I'm just creating on my own time. Okay. And, you know, when I'm just at home, I'm creating, I'm making tracks or making whatever I'm making. But working with people, it'll be a combination whether, you know, first I'll see if there's something I already have that they like, and then maybe if not, we'll go to something custom. It just kind of really depends. Um, some There's some artists that I work with that, that I don't sell beats online, so you can't find like a beat for sale online. So normally people, I create some type of relationship with them. We develop some type of agreement. And then <clears throat> based on that, we'll work out how we exchange beats and they'll have access to either which ones there we've selected and then they work through that so it kind of just depends some people it's you know if I just met them and was something quick or sometimes I'm in a situation where I'm like hey can you come through real quick and I'm not I don't really carry beats we'll just do something there so it just kind of really depends when this worldly situation came about how did that how how were you able to adjust to that? Because with you being a producer and, and, and a recording engineer, you have to be in the studio pretty much most of the time with your clients. So tell us a little bit about how did you make that transition? I was already or had you? <laughs> it's it's up and down. It's, you know, there's some people that are like I work with my younger brother closely, but he's now living out of the country. So of course, you know, we would if he was here, we would meet up. That's my younger brother. But some of my like any new clients, um, Zoom, you know, there's a like now we're kind of transitioning and trying to do things through like Zoom, inst like Instagram, you know, anything where we can have a private meeting where we can hear, you know. But sometimes the the, the hearing is limited, so we'll kind of make something and kind of send it like I love Google drop Google you know there's you can share a lot of files there without having to pay for it um so I just kind of work with everybody it just depends there's some people once I send them a couple tracks they pick and that's what they like or if it's custom we'll try to do a zoom call so that's kind of the hardest part for me is for the people that want to work one-on-one -on -one. I've completely cut out the recording part where and that's kind of hard because I have a I had a guy that wasn't even a rapper that ended up 
becoming a rapper one night in the studio because he's, you know, just kind of getting, getting, and he sounded good. But so now not having that one-on-one -on -one space, that was a little challenging. So I've had to transition and try to work more with artists that have a way to record um, and then send the files and kind of, you know, they'll get the beat, they'll record wherever they are, um, send me back the files if they're clean and I can use them to finish out the song. So that's kind of been the new way of working since since COVID. When you were in the studio prior to all of this madness, <laughs> were you a little hesitant about thinking that, okay, this is a male dominated business and um, I'm, I don't know if they're going to take me serious. You know, I think that as women, that's been like, you know, even outside of business, you know, we had a whole women's rights movement. So that's been a thing for women all our life. And I think I just, I grew up with, even though my mom was a stay at home mom, she was still independent and my dad taught independence. So one of the things in the world where most of my jobs hate me because I speak up, like I, I'm not half, I'm not going to say, oh, I'm fine. I'm going to say, no, I'm not, you know, and, and that's just the answer. You know, most people don't want to hear that. So I think having that and then just, I grew up mostly with, I was the only girl in almost all the situations in my life. All my cousins, all my aunties had boys. My mom had all girls. My mom like wanted a boy so bad, but she kept having girls and her <laughs> sisters kept having boys. <laughs> that I'm sure that was pretty kind of odd like all the girls here and all the boys here <laughs> yeah, so, so growing up here's 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 being a kid my cousin literally lived across the street from the park you can see the park from every window out of the house facing forward so I'm there and all the cousins have to stay at my this auntie house for the weekend and I'm like hey let's go to the park they're like cool but somehow they want to climb go out the climb the tree jump the fence do all this extra stuff to just walk out the front door and walk across the street <laughs> and they're like well you could just stay here and I said no I'll just meet y'all there <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> you know so that's kind of been the foundation in life when you're you just have to kind of bypass it like regardless of how you feel I'm here so if I focus on that I don't get what I need done you don't, have to, you don't have to like it. You can think that yours is better. That's fine. I'm, I'm not in a competition. It's art. There's no, it's like, it's art. We're all making something. So at this, I think that's where some people don't like because I just, I just roll my eyes. Like, I don't want to look old, stressed <laughs> out by how you feel. <laughs> Come on now. And, and if, woof, woof, woof. And then at the end of the day, I, I have not, I'm not people, I'll remove just some, either I'll remove myself if it gets to the point where say I'm in somewhere or somebody's just being completely removed, like completely negative or rude. If they can't be removed, because, then I will be removed on my own. I don't, I subtract quickly. Yeah. Me too. I'm right. No drama, no stress. I'm cool. I'm cool. Yeah. Now I'm I not. have to tell you. When I do when I do the editing for the Kennedy show, Kennedy mm -hmm. show, I do a lot of it, but then I, I'm very intimidated by some of the software because mm -hmm. I had to learn some things. Mm -hmm. Were you intimidated when you first started looking at all of those boards and all those channels? And tell us a little bit about how that process was for you and where are you at now? I mean, I think as in anything that's new, it's going to be a challenge, you know, until you understand it. I kind of, my approach to everything is more knowledge. Once you understand, then it's not as scary. That's how you kind of deal with it. You know, in the world of technology, you have that level of things are constantly changing. So what you learn is still going to, is going to be changed. So you got to learn new. You got to be able to adapt and learn to new ways of doing things, you know, and that's kind of in music when in technology, there's that level of that where it's like a mathematician, you learn math, you learn all the ways of doing math, you know it. You know, then music, you most people like there's people that I know that you know, and that are like struggling with the digital stuff, which is and I'm explaining like, hey, this this digital board is exactly the same board, you know, it's all the same information, but it's a it's the method that the tool that they're using that's foreign. You know what I mean? I think that 
for me personally, I just try to learn it, you know, try to use resources. I tell people, I tell people like when I'm trying to explain to like some of my older aunties on how to use a computer, hit the help button. Help. <laughs> no, no, seriously. University of YouTube. I tell everybody, I call it the University of YouTube. That's, that's your friend. That's if you, if you don't know YouTube, there's another one. Um, I can't remember the, the other name of one where the, the guys are like usually on a chalkboard showing. So there's so much resources now where in our time we had to go to the library and hope the library had a book on the subject that we wanted. And hopefully it wasn't <laughs> just super outdated. Now we have the internet. <laughs> like we have the internet. You know what I'm saying? We have everything. Yeah. Anything you want to know how to do, you could start, you know, doing it. You have some good news to share. You have an event coming up here in a few yeah. months. Yes, that's what's been taking a lot of my time too, even with uh, my projects this year. Because it's getting as it gets closer. At first, I was like, "Oh, I got plenty of time. I could do all of this. I could get all this. <laughs> done. You know, me, I can get all of this done." And then now the day's getting closer and closer, and I'm like, "Okay, no, I know. Okay." Um, I'm a very, well, I'm not getting everything done because I'm so focused on picking out the perfect color rose. <laughs> and just for those who don't know, she's getting married. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. July. Nice. COVID has made it kind of difficult to plan a wedding. You know, we were planning on getting married last year, but we pushed it out because um, of COVID. And so this year it was like, you know, we both, he, and my fiance didn't see herself being engaged for like, five years of us okay. plus we're not that young we young but we're not like <laughs> green, green chicken <laughs> yes. Yes. well congratulations thank you if I really if I had a chance to know you back then I would have been like you know what you need a, a wedding planner I mean you know I do those things too <laughs> I, you know, I had a, it was uh I had a not a bad situation but you know, the, the venue that I met, they were really strict on their vendor list and things like that. And mm. I was uh, fortunate to get the people that I wanted to work with included on their vendor list, which is a good thing for us. So now, you know, and this particular, my, my wedding planner was like, you know, I had been trying to for a couple of years to get in with them. And I was one day, well, I was going to call up there and just, I was like, I was like, oh, aren't you glad you didn't? God has a bigger plan. Look, you there now. There you go. You know, and at first she thought I was kind of putting her off. Like I wasn't letting her know. She was like, I know you were busy. I was like, when I finally talked to her, I was like, no, I was trying to like, you know, you, you win more with honey, not fire. Oh, okay. you, know, you know, you win more with honey, not fire. So. Wow. I've never heard that. Yeah. It's, you know, it's, you know, you don't have to, to get what you want. You don't always have to express your frustration. Sometimes you can like, if you kind of like figure out a way to resolve and find another way around. And, and in this situation, it was okay. I'll be fair. Let me yes. talk to you. Wait, let me talk to your people on your list. I talked to a couple of them. I wasn't happy. I was able to explain to my my coordinator there that hey, I looked at everybody, but I don't think they can make my vision come to come to. <laughs> Is it your vision, your day? You should have it the way you want. And Nothing you, wrong with that. You hire, you got to trust that they relate to you and you feel like they can make that happen for you. So, yes. and I'm trying to say it in the most nicest way possible, but they didn't have anybody on their list that I felt that really related to me. Like they were professional and they had great work, but it wasn't work that really resembled my culture. Tell us a little bit about that. <sighs> well, bro, you know, I'm Indian and black, basically. That's, you know, most people are like, what kind of Indian? East Indian. And most people are like, oh, is that like Saudi Arabian? I'm like, no, it's actually Southeast Asian. <laughs> 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 Indians from India are actually considered Southeast Asian. It doesn't fall in the Middle East. But I know a lot of people kind of just take that general region of the world that anything between Africa and China is the Middle East. They're like, yeah, that's just, they're all the same people. They're actually not. They're, you know, they're, they're different. Different. Like Iraq and Iran fall in the Middle East, but India falls in the continent of Southeast Asia. Did your heritage have anything to do with your music approach? Um, 
I know you said your grandfather had uh, an instrument, the organ and all of that, but when you sought out to actually do music, regular mm-hmm. music, did did they want to inf- were they influential you know, were your parents or you know like were they i just think like as an artist everything of like about you no matter what medium of art that you make everything about your life and your experiences are going to influence you you know what i mean and it's going to come out i mean they're all a part of you so normally all art is a form of some type of expression you know so I don't know. A lot of people don't really, I don't really, I mean, sometimes I use a lot of flutes and I hear like, sometimes I'm like, yeah, that sounds a real kind of Asian, like the flutes that I like, the sounds that I kind of like, I can, to myself, I can hear that. And I've heard some people say say that they sound real Eastern. Um, But for the most part, most people say consider my music more hip hop. When did you actually take this? And we're going to talk about where did, oh my gosh, it's Jay Hussein. Because <laughs> I hear a little valley going on. I hear that con- I hear that California thing going on. So tell us, how did you come up with, oh my gosh, it's Jay Hussein. And when did you actually finally say, you know what, I'm going to go for this? So it was February around this time. It was like Valentine's um 2018 and I was like I'm gonna make me some I had already been I had already been making beats but I wasn't like well because I had already sold some beats like when I lived in Florida I produced a couple tracks with people ones but I wasn't like still putting it out there like my Instagram was still private my name was none your business and it was private so you I didn't add nobody <laughs> none your business <laughs> and so in February, I was like, okay, my friends, one of, some of my friends were like, you just got to, like, you got to put it out there. You got to stop being like that. And I was like, I don't know, you know, my daytime job. They're like, girl, really, you got a whole arm full of sleeves and a, and a lip ring, and you're the only person I know with that that works in corporate America. I'm like, you shouldn't even care. You really don't care. And I'm like, you know what, I guess I really don't. But so, I, you know, after I kept kind of BSing around, and then it was Valentine's Day, and I was like, you know, around that time, and I was like, okay, I'm going to change my name. So I just... I don't know what I changed it to at first. It was something like just probably Jay Hussein, my, my nickname. And I started putting beats out there, like kind of just slowly putting stuff up. But I wasn't really, I just kind of like slowly did it. Then, I don't know, like a month later, I sold a beat. And I did a song with this guy named Trey Boy called um, Straight Trippin'. It came out at the end of the year. Then I started like working with um, Henny Caesar and people like Yo Gutta. And it kind of like took me a little fast. Because I was like, you know, I didn't expect it. I had just put it out there, you know what I mean? And it came, so I just kind of rolled with it, you know. I was, I had just moved to Austin. South by Southwest was here. And I had to work during South by Southwest. But I still <laughs> worked as much as I could. And that was really it. Like, I would say, I put, I kind of, like, stopped, like, gained the confidence to put it out there. Then when it came, just net, I just networked as much as I could. Like, I got to move as many people as I could, like, hey, they have a place to go see something, you know, hear something, and just went from there, and was surprised, you know, as it just grew. Well, you know, when you're good, you're good. When you're hot, you're hot. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) You're welcome. What's going on with the projects? Now, how many projects do you have so far? And we're going to talk a little bit about your latest release as far as your tracks and things like that are concerned. So out, I mean, you, know, you have those. This is where I learned early on. I was selling beats to people, leasing beats. But then not everybody actually finishes their project or actually really gets to the end of getting a song out. So you sold a beat, but now your beat is locked, depending on how you sold it. You know what I mean? And that's why I don't really like I don't really like selling exclusives anymore, because it's like unless I know that person is working, actually actively working with their music career. Mm-hmm. Because otherwise, for me, it's a sale. But I need more than just a sale of the beat. You know, and I need it to actually do something. I need it to get out and be heard. So I was selling beats and then they were just to me I call it the sitting on your hard drive. You know what I mean? It's getting it's getting stuck on a hard drive somewhere and it's getting played at family reunions and to people's cousins, but it's not getting played to the people that are actually going to consume it. So that doesn't really work for me, you know, and it wasn't like I don't really wasn't depending on it just for the money, you know. 
And it was like, I want to make money in music. Yes. But I also want more than just that. You know, it's, it's not critical in music for me that it doesn't support my day to day. I have other sources of income. So I need for what I call my garden, you know, to grow. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And so I kind of switched gears and started working with artists and um, putting out, putting out songs independently under myself and then still working only placements with artists that I see, like, like I have an artist called Henny Caesar. He's somebody, he just dropped a dope album last year and I'm, I have a song on that, that album. So, you know, people like that, that I know that are working towards project. So I have a couple that's, and I've learned the hardest thing was, I used to want to tell everybody everything that was happening at first and then it didn't happen. So now <laughs> until, they fin- until they get to the finish line, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it's TVD because I don't want to be out here. Yeah, I got a song with Jesus and then Jesus never get it done. They're like, what happened? I don't have a song with Jesus. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, See, like, and that's, that, that's that crazy thing. What, what, what do they say? Well, I don't want to tell it right now because I don't know if it's going to go. You know, mm-hmm. you learn the hard way with stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like yep. now, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Yep, until it happened. When it happened, when it when it becomes official, that's when we could you know celebrate. Until then, it's like okay, I'm just gonna keep watering and hopefully it grow and we can. That's all. That's all you can do. So, like I said, I started working with um, developing artists that I work with more closely. Like I have a lot of music people in my family, so we started working together and putting out songs. Um, you know, because my brother's a, a rapper and a singer, so he was already like. I don't really need to buy beats from people with my sister. <laughs> I know that's right. <laughs> Why not? You Keep know, it in the family. You know? So, and then my fiance is a DJ. So we, we just kind of, kind of work. It goes from, I give a beat to my brother. He's making a song. Sometimes my, my fiance is actually, um, he raps and he's on a lot of the hooks of songs. And that wasn't what he was trying to do, but, you know, we just, kind of started doing a lot of stuff and it just keeps growing so we use you know that resources that we have within each other first that's the dopest thing you have your resource at hand and and you utilize that and you that's been been the biggest thing during COVID because honestly COVID was a big push for that also because at first, you know, my fiance was like working with people for DJ gigs. Maybe we were all kind of working together, but working and we're outside. But then COVID happened and it was like, well, we really only could, this is what we, this was a right. on the circumstances around us. So that made it, made it honest with a blessing because it made us realize what we had right here even more than looking outside. It was like, I was like, you already got what you need. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Love You Again. Tell us a little bit about that. I actually like that song. You do? Thank you. I so, love it. I love it, actually. I, I, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, me and my younger brother, we are, we, we be like that. I probably talk, we talk probably too much. Like, we talk a lot. <laughs> we call each other probably twice, two or three times a day. We, yeah, video chat, and we're always talking. If it's texting, we're just always talking. And then we do music like over the internet. So he was like, I got this song, I got this kind of stuff I need to do. So we're talking. So I'm sitting there like making it. And so I started kind of playing the little chords. He was like, Yeah, do you see? And, and then I made the little He's like, Yeah, that's it. Just give me that sentence to me. Send it over to him. And he recorded his, his hook, recorded his verse, and then he sent it back to me. I kind of engineered on it. Then I'm listening to it. He was like, hey, I'm going to do it. We went through a couple of different changes. He did a second verse in Hindi. And we're like, okay, this is kind of nice. Yeah, he sing, he, he um, speaks Hindi and sings in Hindi also. And I was like, okay, this would be nice. Because um, I tell like I tell him, I'm developing him as an international artist. He's a crossover artist because he can sing in both, both languages and rap in both languages. Wow. But as I'm listening to the song, I'm like, I'm just steady saying, no, I need a female singer. I need somebody that's gonna like, cause I'm, you know, when when I asked him, what was the, what was the motivation behind the song? And he's telling me he's like, you know, just from a guy's perspective, this, this, this. And I was like, oh no, I can't just, put, you know, oh no, 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 no. We need some a woman's perspective to come back on here and be like, you know, how how are you gonna say this? So we, you know, this uh, artist Tanasha ended up working with her on it. She had a dope response to what he had to say, and it just kind of came together, you know. For me, it was just like, I know we could, we had another gentleman on the song too, but it just, it didn't give me 
what I felt I needed in the song, you know. So it took literally, we were pretty much, we were done with the song, but we were trying to, you know, that second verse, we just went through, you know, people to, for, for me, it was me. I was the one that was not approved. It was like, it's not, it's not ready. It's not right. <laughs> it's not, it's just not what needs to be there. And so then we got it done and it was, we got it done in time for 2020. Um, I kind of like to work on project basis because I had to learn early on I was over committing myself. Oh. And so I had to switch to projects and start realizing how much time, you know what I mean, do you really have to put into a project with each artist depending on how they work. So that was a, that's been a new challenge. We're trying to like, you know, hit dates, hit, you know, projects, get them done in a certain time. And like for us, I didn't start putting music. We didn't put our first song out until July of last year. So all of our Spotify wrapped last year was actually for a couple of months, which was super, super. That was like my first time. I was expecting, I was hoping like, man, if we get like 2000, we're going to be good. Like, you know, we just need to get on the board this year. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just wanted to get a spot. I just wanted to get on the board. And it was like, wow. Okay. It was so better response than even expected. So we're like, let's keep going. Let's just keep doing it. Wow. I see. That's what I'm talking about. When God blesses you, come on now. Come on. <laughs> By any chance, would you happen to have that handy so we can hear that a little bit? I don't wonder. Okay, I could play it. I do, but I'm wondering if it's going to sound, how that's going to sound through this connection. And while you're trying to cue that up, tell everyone how they can actually reach you. So best way, uh, Jay Hussein everywhere. Um, so Jay Hussein on Instagram, Jay Hussein on um, Facebook. But I'll follow us. Well, just go to www.jayhussein.com. That's where I try to tell everybody, go to my website, go to the place where you know you're going to find me. And then from there, there's links to everywhere that you can find me, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. I think TikTok's the new one. I think I got to get that on there. And Twitter. Um, if you don't have a Spotify account and you want to hear my music, all the links on our on my website will take you to YouTube. So if you click on the song on YouTube, I mean on my website, it's going to take you to YouTube. It won't take you to Spotify or Apple Music. Um, any interview you want to read, the links on the website will take you to those sources too. So if all else fails, just come on home to www.jhussein.com. Nice. And then, guys, just so you know, that uh, website link is in the profile of her Instagram. So you could just go right there. You get off of here when we're finished and click on the link and it'll take you to everything that you need to know about Miss J. Hussein. And let me play that for you. You want me to, um, how long do you want to play? A whole song or just a Just about a minute. That's fine. Give me, mm -hmm. We don't want to give it all away. We want to make sure that they go to your page, go to YouTube, go to Spotify and listen to the whole entire thing mm -hmm. and download it. Help me out. All right, let me make sure you can hear it. Tell me if you can hear this. Okay. I just don't want it to overpower and be too loud. Does that sound good? Is that loud enough? Yes. My favorite part coming up. I sing that part all day. I go around the house saying, yeah, so you got to hear the rest to see what he's talking about, how you're going to do me like that. And women, let me know your opinion if you feel D Malik or if you feel Sinatra Lynn. Whose side are you on in this song? Who you feel the most? <laughs> I, I enjoy that because it has a catchy course. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that it's a love song. Mm -hmm. You have some other tracks that are really concentrated on tr on the real hip hop trap southern mm -hmm. songs style. Let's talk about um, <laughs> bounce that ass. Now we ain't gonna play it. <laughs> We're not gonna play it. <laughs> But for those, <laughs> tell us a little bit about that, though. 
So, you know, I I didn't know we didn't I didn't know what the song was gonna um end up. Did we do the hook or the verse on that song first? It was the hook? So we did do the hook. So my fiance came up with the hook. And um when we were thinking at first when he first wrote the hook, I'm looking at him like what what you been watching that's been bouncing? You ain't be like, that's not been basketball, like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like so. And so he's like, you know, it's just come I'm thinking of this. And I'm like, okay, I see your vision. I see your vision. I see it. Okay, this is great. We can, you know, this is great. And so we had a couple artists we were working with. And it was just kind of like, one of my things is this, it's always a feeling. There's people that send, like, I have, have great verses and tracks. And I'm just like, it's not hitting that feeling and, and the vision that we see. And so my cousin's actually on the first First verse, Bari, him and my and the cousin came over and they were hanging out. And you know, I knew I was like, oh yeah, you do music, huh? I'm like, yeah, so we're eating and hanging out. And then my uh, fiance, you know, worked with him on the verse and we recorded it. And then um, homeboy Henny Caesar came through and dropped, dropped, dropped a verse on it. Um, and it kind of, you know, transformed into, into yeah. it. Who? Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. Sorry, my fiance just reminded me. So yeah, my when Henny came through, he was actually recording some other tracks with me, and so it was like he went. I was like he was like, oh, let me hear what else you got. So I was like, okay, because he was getting ready to leave, and we're like, okay, I'm just playing. He's like, oh, I want to get on that. So he actually literally wrote that. Like he was, you know, needing to get home, but he was like, no, we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and put this down. So he was getting writing it and doing it on his phone at the same time. We were recording and getting it done while he was trying to get out the door. So that's how he ended up on ended up on that. <laughs> he was like, no, he was like, no, I gotta make that one happen right now. <laughs> and so guys, just to let you know, I'm I purposely said that just because you have a variety of sound. You have mm -hmm. a variety of tracks. So for those who want that strip club vibe mm -hmm. <laughs> or that love vibe, you mm -hmm. have that and in between. Yeah, you know, I try to, you know, you know, you, you think about it, we feel we have we feel different ways all the time. And I grew up, you know, you know, I knew what my mom wanted to clean up by the music that she was playing loud. <laughs> 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 and the day the music was playing. So it was like, okay, you know what we're doing today. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's kind of when I make music, you know, I'm just always going for the feels. And I honestly just People always say, do you purposely try to make that? I'm like, no, I honestly, I surprise myself sometimes when stuff come out of me. because I've tried to sit down and say, this is what I want to make. And it'll come out just the complete opposite. So I just started saying, okay, let's see what these do today. And I'm like, okay, I like this. This is kind of like this. And I kind of just kind of categorize, categorize it like that. I try to have less control as possible. That's what's worked for me. The more mm -hmm. I try to control it and be specific you allow, you allow yourself to run into like frustration because it can get frustrating like a lot when I first started I used to be the producer that listened through 70 snares to find the perfect one there's not a perfect one so I'm like click 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 yeah that works that'll work on this one I mean then as I'm going through the mixing stage I'll can find two minutes that needs to be changed again but I'm not gonna like overwhelm myself you know there's a um and I forgot the name of it, but in psychology, it's like the vending machine. It's like a vending machine syndrome. We give people too many options. They won't make a decision. Mm -hmm. So that's why they kind of limit certain stuff to certain options. So because people will make a decision quicker and most likely they'll get a sale. So, you know, I just look at that like I don't overwhelm myself because I'll be on the same one. Well, you know, that one's three degrees lighter than that one. And I could get I could personally know I will get stuck in that if I don't just make a decision and move on. And I know with that particular job that you have, that career choice that you have, it is very time consuming and you can get caught up real quick on something mm -hmm. that is just so minor, but it ended up being three to four hours and maybe a day or two span trying mm -hmm. to make sure that it's right and perfect to what you want. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that everybody once again Tell them where you can be found. And also, if there's anything else that you'd like to add that we haven't touched on yet. Um, I can't really think about that. You can always, again, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Jay Hussein. And um, I don't know, anything you haven't touched on besides <laughs> my wedding, that's about it. 
<laughs> How about this? Go ahead. I was gonna say, well, I've I've finally got my feet wet into home, like land ownership. I've been trying, you know, with, with all of the pandemic and all that. We were originally gonna, we were looking at buying a home, and then I said, you know what? Let's buy some land and start from scratch. And a lot of my family was like, that's a lot of work. You should be intent. But I'm like, actually, it's exciting because it's been exciting. That is, that is awesome. Mm-hmm. And you have something that you can pass on and mm-hmm. leave a legacy. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I do have something. Okay. You and I share something else in common. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> I heard you're a Virgo. Oh, yeah, I'm a Virgo. You know yes, me too. <laughs> yep. so words, we know what we want. We try to us easy. It's easy, Danny. We, we we give you an automated book. You can ask us. We'll say yes or no. I think where a lot of people, what I always say is people don't like, they don't because they didn't like that we gave them the real response. People don't, sometimes don't like hearing no or sometimes even the yes. Like, are you, cause some people ask the question in reverse. Like, are you upset? Yeah. Like, <laughs> You know, we stand for, we speak up. I know that. And I've never met a Virgo that did it. And that was either you, we, we, we going to get along with you as long as you fly straight. If you don't, I mean. Mm. My biggest thing that I still have to think about, and I literally just said this conversation earlier, I strive for perfection. And I know that that's the hardest thing you do, you know, when you have to overcome what you have to overcome when you're doing what you're doing. Because every little editing something or whatever it is, that microsecond off can throw a whole project off. You know, that's why you, like I said, like where when I'm going like at first, it was like, okay, yes, yeah, some sound, you know, you go through it, but you, it, like as a Virgo, that's what I was saying for me doing music, I step back from having that perfection. Like I want it and I listen for it, but I'm not like gonna like, stress myself out about it it's kind of a quick and easy like yeah no and then as I'm building the it just depends like when I'm constructing the finished part with the verses and the hooks that I have and making sure that the way the artist sounds there reflects even just the concept and all that that's a different way you know what I mean because I'm like it's a matter of me just telling them to do it again and then when I'm making beats you know I'm looking at okay checking myself constantly because I'm a Virgo because like I said I was you could sit there all day trying to find the perfect thing but people and seven months and people don't see it the way we do so instead of letting that limit me i just take just go and make a decision and sometimes people are like i hate that 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 high hat i'm like we can go change now i can just go in there and change it you know what i'm saying like you find ways to kind of overcome because you know then i'm getting older i think as a virgo <laughs> I, don't have, I don't have the, the same patience at the time Exactly. That's been another thing. Like, you know, God has God will put you in situations where he makes you deal with, you know, deal with that. So we're like, okay, you know, that's cool. I'll I'll fight that battle later. You know what I mean? Hits. And then like I said, that's the whole honey gets more than fire. That's what to help some of that with Virgos being like, we got to get what we want. I'm learning. I just kinda like work more with honey because people like that better than fire. <laughs> Again. <laughs> <laughs> Keeps you from having wrinkles, stress yourself out. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I definitely want to thank you so much for spending time with me on the Candy Show. This is my first time communicating with you verbally, and uh, I, I appreciate I your you in- show. So it was like you know, I have been watching you for a while. I was like, okay, I, I like I like the vibe of your show. So thank you, I appreciate I you. <laughs> thank you so much most definitely i will continue to support you hopefully you know whenever in god's time hopefully it'll be soon but you know i will definitely still continue to support you from afar and um i can't mm-hmm. wait to hear what else is coming up next i know i got some you know the, the part of me the old part of me is like play it play it play it and the other part of me like no you have to just wait till this project's done so <laughs> there's some great stuff coming this year though um, I'm working with some people with the Freeway Ricky Entertainment. Um, I, that's already in process. So there's some placements with them that I'm working with some of their artists. And then there's my own project that we're still trying to put out um, by July with D Malik and Bra- Bravo. We just haven't named it yet. We're working on the songs. We have the songs, but we don't have the name of the project yet and kind of that whole package. But the, we have songs that are in process. 
Well, see, and that's the reason why everybody mm -hmm. need to stay tuned and continue to follow you mm -hmm. to see what you have coming up, yep. to see what that new project is going to be named and yep. all of the other different things that's coming up for you. So I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you guys for commenting, staying here with us on the candy show and my guests. Oh my God. It's Jay Hussein. <laughs> you want to know how that happened for you? Good. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm like, this is going to come. So when my homeboy uh, keys, um, we were making some tracks. He was just like, you know, Jay, you can't keep making tracks. And that was none of my tracks had tags before. I would just make them. He was like, you can't do this. You need a tag. And I was like, okay, I'm going to pay somebody to do a tag. He's like, yeah, to pay somebody to do a tag. Make your own tag. And I was like, well, what am I going to say? So I'm sitting there. I turn my mic on and I'm just saying a variety of stuff. I'm like, Jay, saying the track. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I was saying, uh, like, all type of stuff. And at first, I had changed my name to Jay Hussein on track, even though I didn't have a tag. I was like, that sounds cool. I guess that'd be that. So he actually still calls me that to annoy me because he knows, like, it was quickly there and gone. So he'd be like, you still? <laughs> so then we were listening through what I some of the stuff I said, and I said, one of them was like, oh, my God, is that Jay Hussein? I was like, that'll work. And I was like, hmm. Yeah, so why'd you say it? I was I, I was thinking of stuff to say. Like I was really just sitting there being like beat by Jay Hussein. I was like kinda like and I didn't want to sound like mm -hmm. other people. So I was just like and then when I in my mind I was just kinda like, Oh my god, is this really me? <laughs> like <laughs> like is this, But this you know it's me? catchy. It's catchy. Yeah, and I wanted to still sound feminine. I didn't want to sound like you know, I didn't want to sound like the male producers. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to still like, hey, I'm a female producer. This is my signature. It's going to be girly. You know, my favorite color pink. So, <laughs> uh, well, I'm telling you that it uh, it is. Oh my god! Like, it's Trey Hussein. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. You're welcome, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And you guys have a great day, great night, great morning, wherever you're tuning in from. Thanks Stay for having tuned. me. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.